All right, so I officially have mine live. So trydjango.com is now a live working site. And we're gonna walk through on how you can do it as well. But even just cfedeploy.webfactional.com, that is also a live site. So even if you stopped here, that's okay. But we wanna get it on our own domain. And as you see, it's the exact same stuff. It's not gonna be any different. And then from there, we're gonna add in our error pages. So if a page doesn't exist, we'll see an error page show up instead of just not found. All right, so the first thing that I want you to do is go ahead and open up your project, and then in allowed hosts, put a domain that you own and control. Now to buy a domain name, purchasing domain names, um, I suggest name.com, so http colon slash name.com. That is what I would say is where you'd wanna buy a domain name, okay. And that, of course, tryjango.com is an example of a domain name. And notice that I have a subdomain here of www. You want to have both of these inside of your allowed hosts. Um, and also, if you try to point your site to or your domain to here, it's not going to work, right? So to mine specifically, it won't work because allowed hosts won't let it to work, right? So only these can actually host this site. Um, and if you wanted anything to host your site, you could do a star there and that would allow that to happen but we don't want to do that uh, and so as far as it's the, your production settings that's all you really need to do uh, there's really nothing else that we need to change at this point everything else is ready to go we just need to add those a lot uh, allowed hosts in and then the next part what we need to do is templates so templates are going to be based off of the built-in error views so this is the reference for it but each error view has a different template itself, right? It's gonna raise a different template. So error views 404 not found, it's got a template name of 404.html, 500 page, like a server error, it has a template of 500, forbidden view, so it's not there, uh, you can't see it, you have permission denied, 403, and then finally 400. So I'm not gonna style these, I'm just gonna make them though. So instead of templates, I'm gonna do 500.html, and then I'll make another one, 404.html, then another one, 403.html, and then the last one will be 400.html. Okay, so these are all uh, HTML pages that are gonna be ran when there's an error occurred. And those errors happen automatically. So we're gonna extend base.html for each one and then in block content, I'm gonna say the error that it was. So H1 404 error occurred, page not found. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it in each one. All right, so 400 error. 400 error is the bad request. So you'd say 400 error occurred, bad request. Please try again, stuff like that. And then the we can close that one. 403 is permission denied. Okay, 400 already did that one. 500, this is a server error. So 500 error occurred, server error, we have been alerted. And since we have this server error and we have something said, we have been alerted, uh, please try again later. Since we've been alerted, we wanna go into our production and add in some admins here. So at the very top, we're gonna do admin equals to And we wanna say our name and then our email. And we're gonna put this in a tuple, also known as tuple, depending on how you say it. There we go. So admin, that's our admin users, that is. Uh, so it's gonna send an issue out to those admin users. And in fact, it's actually admins. So the different admins that you may have. So you could put a, a, a nice list of all the different users you might want to alert 
to any errors. And those are gonna be specifically 500 errors. Now, if your 500 page is not rendering, that's because of extends base, you might need to have your own custom HTML page here completely, just like its own base.html, but the entire page being that way in order for this to always work for sure. Because uh, the 500 error might mean that there's a server error specifically with um, all types of things in your server. So this page might need to be its own custom HTML. Okay, so that's it as far as all of our production code. Everything on our production level is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in our base uh, .html, the DB password, I'm gonna add in all that stuff again, back into our server. And then back into source, I'm gonna make sure our templates are showing up too, the correct templates. So I'm gonna drag this entire folder over and I'll just apply to all and just replace it. Um, and you could merge the folder too, but I'm just replacing the entire thing to make sure that it's all there, all ready to go and working. Cool. So as far as our code, it is done. We are not doing anything else with code. It is all done. So give yourself a round of applause. The next part, all we need to do is go into web faction and we need to go into websites. All right, so let's log into web faction real quick. And we're gonna go into our websites. So domains and websites, websites. And we want to actually edit this website. So I already have these domains in here, but you would type in your domain. So let's say ABC domain name.com. You would type that in and you would say create. Another way to do this too is instead of having create, I hit cancel out of this, you could also just go into domains itself and then add these domains in. Um, and that will be how you actually add the domain to the website itself, right? So this will actually show up on the website itself. And then once you actually go there, it'll be routed correctly. That is, of course, if you in your domain names, so let's say you bought your domain name at name.com, you'd go into the domain names and you'd hit edit name servers. And then you would add each one of these name servers. So NS1, NS2, NS3, and so on. So if you had it at default name service, so I'm gonna just go ahead and copy this and just hit use default name service. This is what it would look like when you first go in here and you'll just edit each one and just change it to web factions servers. Of course, I'm gonna hit cancel because I don't actually want to change that. Um, and that's it. So I would recommend that you do that as far as setting up your domain names. And once you finish setting up your domain names, you can just go to your domain and this will show up. It might take a moment for it to actually show up, uh, but it is important to make sure that the DNS servers or all the servers propagate and are able to get catch up to the changes that you made. The last thing you may need to do, if it's still not showing up, you might have to go into your server and actually restart the server again. So whenever you make any significant changes to the server, you wanna make sure that you restart it each time. Um, so like we just added some code into the uh, with FTP. So we wanna make sure that we're restarting our server by just going in here and doing this exactly. So I go ahead and restart it. Now I refresh into tryjango.com and that's working. And I can say hello there. And that's a page that does not exist. I'm getting a server error here. Um, this might be for a lot of different reasons, but this is a 500 internal server error where other pages are not having that same server error. And it's probably has something to do with the um, actual templates that I brought over. So for the 400 error page occurred, let's see, block content uh, in four, here it is. That's the error right there. So notice it gave us a server error, but it did not give us the correct 500 page. And that's because even the 500 page had an error. So it should be in block, not in four. That was just a little minor error there. So let's try that one more time by uploading the templates and apply to all, replace. It's gonna load up those templates. I shouldn't have to restart the server, but um, it's a good chance that I might have to. So as far as server errors are concerned, it would have sent me an email if my email was set up correctly, but of course I didn't. And notice now that I changed the actual templates, it's actually working correctly. So 404 error occurred, page not found. All right, so that is it. We have now finished Try Django 1.8. You've done so well, and there's a lot that you've learned uh, through this whole process, hopefully, and it will give you a very good understanding of how uh, Django works and how you can use it uh, for your own projects. 
So if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, but as far as the next steps, what you're gonna wanna do is, is check out codingforentrepreneurs.com. This is our site. We have a ton of projects on here, all sorts of things that will help further your understanding of Django, Bootstrap, and web development in general. We talk about things like Ajax, Search, all sorts of stuff that will help you further understand how to build full-on projects. And we do that step-by-step, step, just like this one, Try Django 1.8. We do it just like it and we go through in depth of all these other projects as well. Um, and if you're not already a member, go ahead and check out uh, enrollment. We will have some codes or discount codes within the GitHub for those of you who finished Try Django for the first time. You'll be able to try this out, uh, um, a membership for a discount because of your hard work with Try Django. And just so you know, we also have all types of web development, individual topics that we go into uh, for all sorts of things, Django related, Python related, and we also have some Swift stuff and we will have more things like jQuery as well as more Swift in the future. Um, and this, if you wanna just sign up for a free account, you absolutely can do that and just, you can join for free either with Facebook or your email. And in here, you can also suggest new projects that you wanna see us build. So all sorts of things here. Uh, we definitely listen to all of these projects because we believe that our users often know exactly what needs to come next. And that's typically how we build a lot of our next projects. So if you have any questions for us right now, please let us know. Um, if you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, we would much appreciate it. And it's codingforentrepreneurs.com slash YouTube, or you could go to joincfe.com slash YouTube. They will go to the exact same place and it'll take you to our YouTube channel and even get you right there. So all you would have to do there is subscribe, of course, right there. Um, and yeah, so we have a lot of Django stuff on there as well that is free and easy for you to use. So if you have any questions, let us know. Um, if you have any suggestions, please let us know as well. Uh, thanks again for watching Try Django, and we hope to see you in, the, in an upcoming class or in one of the classes we already have. And uh, thanks again, take care.